Hey guys, James from Fairclough Studios, and today I'm going to do a long-term review of the Jiyun Weeble Lab gimbal. Here she is. So, I've been using the Weeble Lab for around about 18 months, and we've just decided to replace it with the Weeble S. Um, it's not been the worst thing in the world, but there are pros and cons to it. Number one, pro is you get this rather nice hard case. I don't personally use it, but I know a lot of people do. Um, it's similar to the one you get with the DJI uh, Ronin S. So everything fits in it very nicely. Um, yeah, all the accessories and everything. Yeah, a good complement of accessories and yeah, you get everything you need to shoot straight in the package. So the actual gimbal itself is quite a compact thing. Comes with a little tripod um, that you screw into the bottom or into the top for underslung mode. Um, I'll put it in underslung mode for a start. Sorry, stupid noise. To demonstrate my first kind of gripe with this gimbal, and that is the clearance between where your knuckles go and the actual uh the which one's that that's the roll motor my my least favorite motor is the roll motor because when i've got my hand there it's scraping against my knuckles like yeah it's there's not enough clearance there if you've got really small hands and really small fingers then absolutely fine but my knuckles scrape against that something awful and during a, a shoot that is not pleasant it's just painful to shoot with so i tend to kind of uh, shoot with it in the regular mode most of the time my second gripe with it is what's just happened there yes there are transport locks and all the axes but they come undone at nothing they're great for like packing it away but yeah once you get it out it will flap around all over the place gripe number three that's just happened as well this is going really well isn't it uh, this mini tripod here the legs work themselves loose over time so it started out really kind of stiff and great and brilliant and over time it's just like really flappy so if you try to put it down the legs close on themselves and you can't really put it down so it's a two-handed job to actually put it down because you need to open the legs up a bit with one hand and then put it down with your gimbal hand and if you've got something else in your other hand like a light you can't do it you can't put it down so yeah that's annoying uh it actually works quite well when you pick it up because it's instantly like almost into the handle configuration for using like the uh using it in two-handed mode which i do nearly all the time but yeah to to have to do that and keep it held down while you place it on the surface dead annoying i don't like that at all uh right it's probably not going to give me any more opportunity to actually demonstrate them before i say them now um but yeah my biggest concern with this gimbal is that the calibration goes off a lot like i don't know if it's just mine i don't know if it's a, a faulty motor or something but i'm constantly having to uh, recalibrate it because it goes one degree off on the roll axis really annoying like, i calibrate it nearly every week and every week it drifts off by one degree and i have to adjust for it in post and it's really annoying and it ruins some shots if i've framed something absolutely perfectly in camera and i think it's perfect and then i've got to rotate it and then i've got to scale it and it crops in slightly and i crop off something like important in a wide shot it's a bit annoying because it ruins the framing that i've planned um but yeah that's that's one thing i was keen to kind of upgrade for now we came from the crane 2 um to this uh the crane 2 i found was too big and bulky and i couldn't pack it down enough to take on uh, super lightweight shoots and travel internationally i found it a bit annoying i wish i'd have stuck with it because it was so stable and it was absolutely rock solid i got beautiful beautiful shots with that gimbal and i really really liked it so this was meant to have the same payload capacity which it does but it doesn't have the stability and the smoothness so 
I'm hoping with the Weebill S I'm going to get better stability and smoothness again because this does have micro jitters, it does have jerkiness and it has all the little niggles that just contribute to it being a headache to shoot with. Um, it's absolutely fine if you've got like a super super lightweight camera like an A6500, A6600, the current generation of the crop sensor Sony's, the Fuji X-T3, things like that with super lightweight lenses but once you get like a Sony A7 and full frame lenses on like we use it just becomes a bit of a pain and yeah I, I don't personally feel like it's up to kind of our professional standard for shooting anymore which is the reason I've decided to upgrade. In terms of the build quality, I don't really have much to complain about. Um, it, although it is mostly plastic, which contributes to the lightweight and also the durability because it doesn't dent, the metal doesn't scratch off and you get bare metal underneath like the original cranes. Like, absolutely no problem with it at all. I did come from the all metal cranes and I thought, mm, a plastic one, I'm not sure, but it's great it feels good in the hand it doesn't get freezing cold because shooting a, an all metal crane in winter is not fun um, it has a rubberized hand grip here fits nicely in the hand finger lies naturally over the trigger button which is great um, this thing looks weird but it does let you rest it and it does add to the stability and the usability and it also gives you a kind of starting point rather than choosing where to hold it on the grip it's already there you just put it in your hand and it just fits and it is a nice design even though I thought it was a bit weird looking at first. You can get a good range of accessories for it, you can get follow focus, you can get a quick release for the handles, um, you can get a phone mount holder, do I say follow focus? If not you can get a follow focus um, and all sorts of other accessories. It has a wireless image transmitter built in which they've taken off for the new model which is why the new model, the Weevil S, is slightly cheaper. So if you do want the wireless image transmission um, that might be a factor. It comes as standard on the Weevil Lab but they took it off on the Weevil S and you have to buy it back as an optional accessory for about £100. Um, but I personally don't use it so I was happy to have the saving and not to have an extra thing in it to go wrong. So overall it's been okay but I do very much think it's been a kind of beta product and that the Weebl S is the actual kind of production version. I think they've made their mistakes on a first generation product, absolutely props to them for kind of swinging for the fences on this kind of radical redesign of the gimbal it really redefined what you can do with a lightweight gimbal and for that I'm really thankful to be uh, to have owned it however the motors aren't strong enough there's not enough clearance there it goes off like all the time the motors just aren't up to the job the tripod flaps about and really annoys me and yeah for those reasons I can't really recommend it anymore it's possible to get some great footage out of this thing if you're really careful um, if you're kind of super smooth with your movements um, but if you're kind of in a rush and you can't really really plan things you kind of rely on the strength of the motors uh, to guide you through some of the movements uh, where if you're in a tight space and you can't get your footwork right and you can't bend your knees enough then yeah it's it's really a little bit of a pain and a very fiddly exercise to shoot with this absolutely perfectly should have turned the sound off on my phone shouldn't i but yeah overall i have enjoyed owning it i've certainly enjoyed the small size when traveling and yeah i've had some fun shooting this gimbal so it's not all bad i've got the weebill s i'm really looking forward to going out and shooting with that and yeah i've got a shoot coming up um on in about 10 days time where i'm going to be trying out the weebill s for the first time properly and see what it can do see about the stability versus the weebill lab and i'm sure i'll have some thoughts about that when i've been shooting it if you've got the budget for it i'd recommend getting something a little bit better save your money don't go with something which is a compromise especially if you're a full frame shooter and you want something that's going to last you a couple of years at least until the weebill s two or something with some awesome fancy features comes out i can't i don't think they can possibly kind of improve on it at the moment but you never know they're a very innovative company they listen to customers they listen to feedback and they just want to kind of improve the way that we're shooting so i really respect that i really thank them for that and if they want to send me anything for free you know where to find me so that's been my long-term review of the Weebill lab overall enjoyed shooting with it but 
probably B plus needs improvement, which I'm sure they have done in the Weeble S and that is to be seen. So if you like this video, really appreciate it if you like it. If you subscribe to the channel, you'll be able to see uh, when I've got some new unboxings, some long-term reviews, some comparisons and some how-tos coming up as well. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time guys. See you later.